Now, what, what, what happened uh, in the beginning, man, the Mexicans actually, by just speaking the same language and coming from the same type of origin, right? Uh, Hispanic background, so to speak, uh, they kind of like had, they became like became the middlemen of those coming from other countries, you know, other countries with, with the drugs, drugs, and they had it top notch. But then you got to admit one thing, you know, like when you become a certain pe person and, and you, you know, your people get empowered, you become larger than. And sometimes you forget the hand that feeding you, right? Which uh, the people that was supplying them starting to feel as though they're not really appreciating this. It's almost as if they're bullying us, bullying us now. And we have to do this, right? Because now, believe it or not, they study uh, letting burden as they are allowing the, the Mexican guys out here, the original Mexican that's from this area, uh, control things. Uh, they also slide people around to get to know the people that they're distributing to. Because it's going to become a time sooner or later where they're going to start demanding their respect and put these people back in the right frame of mind. Because now, although we're putting up with this, we're only doing this so we can get to know the people that you're dealing with. You, you know what I'm saying? So we can stop being uh, dependent. Huh? Dependent. dependent on you. Because as long as we continue to be dependent upon you, you're going to continue to talk to us like we need you. And you guys gonna have a a a, 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 preset, a preset mindset that uh, you guys are, without you guys we're nothing, and, and you know we gonna be up under you guys, and we all know the truth. Without us, there's no you right now. You know what I mean? So uh, as the time grew on, and the trade kept going the way it was going, uh, they like I said they started networking and started to know, know the blacks themselves, and from that. You mean the Colombians? The Colombians started uh, understanding and, and meeting prominent blacks who the Mexicans would uh, give them. Initially were middlemen. Middlemen giving the stuff to. And then from there, you see names start popping up. Big names, you know, that direct from the Colombians. You see what I'm saying? Because. Did like, you ever meet Water and Bowl? Or? I've only heard, well, I met a lot of prominent. People, you see, I mean, Colombians uh, and blacks. Oh, and you personally alike. met Colombians? Uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> because because of my ties with gangs. And see, a lot that of. That leads into, okay, that leads into the question of. Yeah. For someone not from LA, when all you hear of, of crime, black crime is gang, you know, street gangs. But of course, there's a, you know, other things going on. So tell us about the complex relationship between a big black drug dealer in the street gangs. Who, he may not be in a gang, but the gangs run the streets, so how does that work? Well, see, it's like this here. Each one scratches each other's back. We know with uh, money there's power and there's support for the things that we need to make our gang prominence. You know what I mean? And. To, have, to supply the things that we need to get our validations and our laws enforced cost a lot of money. So therefore, we knew in our neighborhood where there's always drug activity, you know, like that, <laughs> there's a resource. And like I said, it's nothing better to have that direct connection as a gang member. You know, although selling drugs might not have been my thing, but I know who the drug dealers were. And you can. Now, you personally, but just to say theoretically, a prominent OG gangster can go to a big drug dealer and basically say either I can make it comfortable or uncomfortable to be over here, but if I make it comfortable, make me comfortable, and then everyone can eat. There you go. And you get money from there the drug go. trade without ever actually selling drugs. There you go right there. You see, and that's how we all ate. And it, even, even though there were gang members who really weren't uh, I mean, drug dealers who really actually weren't gang members, they had to uh, tighten up their gang affiliation with us. They could make that phone call. Yeah, yeah, it was so like saying. they were a gang. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And had to really make us, the neighborhood, feel comfortable that we're dealing with someone who we could in, put that trust in, that would not betray our trust. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't want to treat these a, a, a non-gang member, say for instance, like a player. A player like to win. He goes over the dust. He's like dust. 
What do Wimbledon? That's what a player gonna do. Oh, there's a in the LA street culture. There's a term player, and it really means they, something. They, 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 they play on anybody. They, they, they just it's a get over crowd. You see them to hit a lick crew. You said then you got the people that's like uh, hustlers. Hustle the hustlers, and they hustle you too. They, they, they're like that's borderline player too. The hustlers was a way of sugarcoating saying that we do what the fuck we want to do. You understand what I'm saying? Don't fall in love with us because they don't tell us what we might be doing next. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the hustle shit. Yeah. You understand that hustle? But, but now, a, a committed gang member that's putting back in the neighborhood. You understand what I'm saying? That's solely doing with the neighborhood and the neighborhood's allies. You understand what I'm saying? But basically, the neighborhood, because, you know, this is where greed come in and people start getting, you know, saying, seeing what they got over there. And, you know, it's kids like we are North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> and we Americans something like this. We make sure that nobody got nuclear weapons and shit. I don't validate nobody just because I use the same name, branch I'm from, as my loyal ones. I don't validate them for being loyal like that. I validate those who come from the soil. You know what I mean? Who I watched grow up. You know the character. Who I, who I, who I know who got their relation and where they got their teaching from. And who follow out those characteristics that makes them one of us. You know what I mean? I validate those that don't lose uh, their uh, dedication. Their dedication. They know who the hell they are, and who like no matter how old I get, don't lose that respect. I'm always your elder. I validate those because those are the ones who got that love for you for real. You got those that just move it, and because what we're doing so appear to be glamorous, and they want to be a part of it. But see, they're following our laws. It's not as uh, home felt as those who grew up in the soil. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because you got to answer the soil. But when you just come on because we're glamorous and it's like something fun to do, but you violate one of our laws, you can go back from where you came from and hide. You really don't have that love. If you receive discipline and don't like the way the discipline was brought up on you, you can have retaliation and revenge and, 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 and forget back in your heart. You want to retaliate. You understand what I'm saying? The love is not the same. So I don't validate anybody by the way they look and the way they appear. I validate them by, by, by what I've seen and grew up and saw, you see, saw, saw them develop. We all know each other. We all can tell you from what junior high or elementary, what your sister, my sister, my daddy, your daddy, whatever. It's like a family oriented thing. And we've been there basically and self rooted there all of our lives. So therefore, uh, in the beginning, one brother could be with another brother and take him to this house. And they have to worry about no recourse. They don't have to worry about nobody over there. You talk to my little brother and, and don't beat him up because you know why? They know that his, his brother was out of pocket and you got general love for him. Yeah. You know what I'm Because we've been around each other all our lives. You know what I'm saying? This would separate us from anybody and a lot of other gangs. But then there are other gangs like that. Don't get me wrong. Because like, you got Brims, uh, Bounty Hunters, uh, you, you got uh, shit, at this park, I mean, you got every kind of gang. And bishops, and you got all, all crips, all you got some crip neighborhoods, man. It's really, really shady that we know each other from the babies. Well, because yeah, we grew up in that mom and daddy environment anyway. And most, most of our family were prominent people. You know what I'm saying? They had businesses. They grew up under just in your gang or all the blood. No, I'm not. I'm just gonna speak on where I come oh. from because from a little kid, even I'm on the east side and grew up on the east side. But I, we had Austin, Compton, but I was on the east side with the Russell Elementary School. So I was I was in LA schools, man, hard not schools. But the thing is that. Uh, I've always had a shelter type of life. I grew up around like people, I don't know if you know about Ted Watkins. Heard the name. That, that, that they got Ted Watkins Park now, and, and it was be Will Rogers Park and watch. Is he a political operator? Uh, he, he performed the, uh, the WLCAC oh. back in the day. Okay. And, he's very, and Ted Watkins was the man. Yeah, I heard the name. And he was like my father, man, that I wish I ever, I, I, be, I love him like my dad today. I love Ted Walker. He took me and his son Timothy and Tom and, and treated me no different than he treated his kids. You know, every Christmas I was at their house. So it's like, man, uh, even in Compton, I go there, everybody there, get, they got all the best things, the fine things, because they got their mother and father environment and, and their daddy take time out to take you. So, Cap, when did Compton stop being, feeling like a, a, a suburb and start feeling like the We get to find our own city, bust, bust the other, <laughs> Mr. So we, we, we get to find our own, we get to find our own. Neighborhood because we want to put some, some in, into it, but we had man. Listen, right now we could live just like any square. 
Unlike in parts of South Central, which really are slum poor. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. We Watts. did. We, we didn't. We did it because those that were hard knocks seemed harder. You know what I'm saying? So we know what they did. It was from the grit of their heart. You know what I'm saying? So it was almost but, like you had to try yeah, hard. Say, ours was like a Hollywood act sometimes. Until until we had to show love them from Compton. Everybody in Compton's not an actor. We serious too. You understand what I'm saying? When, once you act for long enough, it really becomes you. Yeah, so therefore, but see, when you're on the east side, like the South Park and over in the Avenue neighborhood I grew up in. Low Bottoms. And low Bottoms, all that kind of stuff. Man, them guys are gritting, they griming. And they, they grind, that's what they call grimy, and get their grind down. And they serious. You understand? And no is unacceptable. You understand what I'm saying? A failure is unacceptable. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, man, no. Uh, we had the same mentality, but we had to ask my mom and dad and all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? We like giving we on our own. You know what I'm saying? Girls like it better. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just, just you get your own name. It's always been about that. Even when I was in elementary school going to wrestle, I used to have little guys to fight me. Instead of them going to get their big brothers to jump on me, they'll come back and fight me the next day. Why? Because their brother already got his reputation. They're not going to stop until I... What's my name? Oh, I'm gonna call you your name now. You know, so they're not gonna stop. You know, so everybody's trying to establish themselves. And it's like, man, on the east side, back to Compton. Like I said, yeah, you. So what you got all these brothers? So I got to tell your mom. See, we don't want to be look like that. You know, see, we don't want you to know our mama press a curl out here. They want <laughs> you want people to know he got that car from robbing or selling dope yeah. or whatever. I, I did the same thing you did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I'm just doing it on a high level. 